Breaking the silence, breaking the silence, breaking the silence, and we won't stop. We've had a long and weary journey, but now we feel alive, so we're ready. This is a new time for this country. We're coming strong like one big army. We're not focused on the past. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fireside chat with the Aster Gates. How are you today? Super good. How you doing, Miss Sally? I am really good, and it is so good to see you. Let me tell you, I've missed you. <laughs> All right, so uh, before we get this kicked off, I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about the Aster. Um, he is amazing. He is a visionary artist who creates work that focuses on space and theory and land development. Um, he focuses on sculptural performance. Um, he draws interest in training and urban planning and preservation. The Aster redeems spaces that have been left behind, creating work that focuses on the possibility of life within things. Um, he uh, smartly upturns art values, land values, human values in all aspects of his work. Um, he contends with the notion of black space as a formal exercise um, defined by collective desire, artistic agency, and the tactics of a pragmatist or an advocate. Um, he has exhibits um, and he's exhibited and performed all across the world, um, including France, Germany, Switzerland, Canada, Italy, the UK, you name it. Um, he's a professor at the Uni University of Chicago in the Department of Visual Arts. Um, he also serves as the senior advisor. Welcome, welcome. Can you hear me? I hear you, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was a lot. It was. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I actually have a lot more, but I know we are, you know, pressed for time and, um, but you are so awesome. Um, we are so honored to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. So, um, oh gosh, I didn't say a little bit about myself. So my name is Allie Bradford. Hi, you guys. It's really weird kind of not seeing you guys, but I know you are there and I feel you virtually. Um, I am an alumni of the Chicago Children's Choir and um, an avid um, ambassador for the organization that is near and dear to my heart. And it is absolutely how I met the Aster. So how does your art specifically connect land or spaces and humans and through those entities how do they interact or overlap yeah so in some ways Alex, it's simple it's like um uh when i started making art i was also interested in abandoned buildings and the block that i lived on you know in 2006 it was a thriving block by 2008 there was a lot of abandonment because um the housing market had crashed and so what I did was I just um, acquired the building next door to the building that I lived in. And I think that my uh, practice of space came because I would buy a building. When I would buy it, I would gut it, renovate it. The guts I would use to like make some art sometimes. And I would sell that art. And then the money that I made in the art world, I would bring that money back to the South Side and restore another building. And so it became this kind of cycle where um, because of my personal love of space and like design and decor and installation art, I just I'm wanted to see a little bit back there. Yeah, it looks amazing, space. <laughs> you know, I just wanted to put all those uh, passions that I had into one thing. And it felt like the, a building was the right um, vessel, the right envelope where all of my love for uh, design, art, spirituality, th that those things could live inside of a building. That's amazing. Um, all right, let's get into this Stony Island Arts Bank. It is sure. on 68th and Stony Island. If you guys have never seen it or ever been, I highly encourage you to check it out. Um, it's a beautiful space. One of our alumni, Ironically, um, Jamila Woods, she actually filmed one of her music videos there, Giovanni. It was done beautifully. Um, I was a actually able to sing with her in that video 
at that space. And that was amazing. Um, tell us a little bit about the Stony, Stony Island Arts Bank, how it came to be, um, what, you, uh, what you were trying to accomplish when you kind of um, spruced up that space and, you know, um, kind of rebirthed it. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the history of that. So again, you know, being, being on Stony Island, if you were walking down the street in 2008, you would go past this abandoned bank. And it was the biggest building uh, on Stony Island. And you could tell that maybe at one point there were lots of buildings like the Arts Bank, but over time they had just kind of torn them all down. Mm -hmm. So it was like the last dinosaur, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just thought if somebody could renovate this and kind of restore it to something beautiful, it would probably help people imagine that other things are possible. So I always talk about it like as a, when you demonstrate a miracle, part of the beauty of demonstrating a miracle is that other people start to believe that miracles can happen. Absolutely. You know, so it, it starts to create more miracles. You know, so um, around 2010, I asked the city if I could take a stab at renovating the building. They said yes. They gave me the building for almost no money. You know, they say for a dollar. Mm -hmm. But it, it was probably uh, about a $6 million project that we did over two or three years, mm -hmm. raising money however we could, getting loans. And, and the goal of the building was first just to be renovated. Just like, we're going to demonstrate that we can have beautiful architecture in the hood. Right. Yes. And, you know, and that was like, if, if we had just done that, that would have been enough. But then we thought maybe this could be kind of a cultural hub and like a bank, it could be the repository for our cultural treasures, our wealth. And that from that wealth, we could then, you know, give it back out. You know what I mean? And so it, it has become kind of a, a hub for creativity. It, it definitely is like an archive and we have, um, you know, the archive of Johnson Publishing Company. We have all their books. We have the Frankie Knuckles album collection. Now, a lot of people don't know, you can sing. <laughs> yeah, I like to sing. Let's talk about that a little bit. So in addition to um, installment art, your visual art, your exhibits, um, you know, that you display here and all over the world. Let's talk about your singing abilities, your uh, performance history, and then um, your group, The Black Monks. Let's talk about that. Sure. Right on. So uh, I grew up singing. Hmm. And, um, <laughs> but, but I'll admit that I was the, um, I was the least, I would say the least talented, but I was probably uh, more open. So I, I remember at a very early age, I was, I was listening to gospel music and kind of whatever was hot in my day, but I was also, you know, going to house music clubs and I was listening to uh, jazz and there were all these, like I knew, you know, I knew who um, Jimmy McGriff was and John Coltrane and I loved this guy, King Pleasure. And then, you know, I knew all the soul music and Dusty's from, from my family. So it was like, I was somewhere between this Baptist uh, experience mm -hmm. and, and like the AACM, like this kind of your this out jazz mm -hmm. experience. And I think that in some ways, the Black Monks, my band now, is this hybrid of, you know, kind of, Baptist roots or like Kojic roots mm -hmm. and then um, this kind of performative uh, jazz ensemble. And, you know, I'm probably singing, I don't know, a lot. Mm -hmm. But but in addition to singing, because again, I'm probably the least talented in, in the ensemble. He is very talented, y'all. He's just super modest and humble. He can sing, okay? I, I know. But in, in addition to the singing, <laughs> it's kind of my job to like add the weirdness, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so um, I'm thinking a lot about, you know, our stage presence and um, what kinds of music that we're listening to together and lots of research around like new ways that we can perform. And then the band is called The Monks because our approach to music 
is it's both improvisational, but also um, simplified, like slow, mm -hmm. it's um, scaled back. And so it's like this tension between all the riffs you can do and trying to hold those riffs in mm -hmm. as a kind of spiritual discipline. So how can you be as humble as possible in the music? And what I found is that the more you resist it, the kind of more energy is, potent is possible in the sound. It's a very unique um, experience, and I'm very glad I was able to kind of witness it and um, be a part, I'll be a of, part it. of it. Yeah, I will never forget it. And speaking of, I have to get to some of our singers' questions. They like blowing up the spot. We've got to, <laughs> we've got to talk about okay, it. Okay, cool. Yes, one of the questions from our singers: What is your biggest inspiration by the Chicago Children's Choir? That's oh because yeah, thank you so much. So singers, I should say uh, to you all that. Um, the choir was also at the Arts Bank and we did some improvised stuff and um, I think the choir did Ave Maria, which was so beautiful. And so part of what I love is um, uh, the choir's commitment to, uh, is commitment to discipline, right? And that through the discipline, the creativity kind of opens up. So it's like, first, first you get it on page, then you get it in your body then you have it in your heart, you know what I mean? And so I think that it, uh, when you guys were with me, where were we? We were in- We were in Munich, Germany. We were in Munich, but we were in Germany <laughs> we together. In New York. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In both places, there was this knowledge of the classical form. Mm -hmm. And then when I asked you guys to freak it, mm -hmm. there, was, there was all of this additional creativity on top of that. And so I love, that there's we're all excited. Thank you so much for taking time to I love talk you guys so much, Eileen. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I love you. Um, looking forward to uh, connecting and working together again. Let's do it. Um, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Y'all take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.